Welcome students to this P-Block session. Now we will discuss in this session group 16, 17 and 18. Let's see the questions on those chapters. Which of the following bonds has the highest energy? See, normally we think uh, when the bond length is small, energy will be high. So if you go by this uh, by that uh, method, then you will get a wrong answer here. Yes, that is correct. Most of the cases it will work, but not always. Why? Because see, suppose here if you take oxygen, oxygen, sulfur and sulfur. We think oxygen oxygen bond length is less. Therefore, it has more bond energy or it is difficult to break that bond. But the lone pairs on oxygens will repel strongly because the bond length is less means they are very close to each other. The lone pair here on one oxygen and lone pair on the other oxygen are so close the repulsions are very high. Because of this high repulsions there is a too much strain in the molecule and it want to separate easily. Therefore uh, externally not much energy is required for it to break because already internally there is a tendency to separate to move away and decrease that repulsion. But whereas sulfur if you take, sulfur also has sulfur-sulfur bond also if you take, in that also there are lone pairs on sulfur. But because of the large distance between the sulfur nucleus and sulfur nucleus, the distance, uh, the repulsions between these two lone pairs and the adjacent sulfurs will be less. So therefore here it is not a problem. And after sulfur, sulfur, selenium etc. if you go down, then you, you, have, you look at the only bond length and decide the answer. Higher the bond length, lesser the bond energy. But only in that second period elements when you are dealing oxygen, oxygen for example, there it will fail. There uh, the bond length is so small or uh, elements are so small, the lone pairs are so close and repulsions are very strong. That's why it is unstable and easily break down. So which of the following has the highest energy? Highest energy is not for this oxygen over bond, highest energy is for the sulfur, sulfur-sulfur bond. And not only here, in group 15 also, NN bond and uh, PP bond, nitrogen, nitrogen single bond, phosphorus, phosphorus single bond if you compare, then again there also not nitrogen, nitrogen bond is strongest, PP bond is strongest there. Similarly, if you see fluorine also, in halogens also, FF, CL, CL. So among them, not FF bond is strong, CL, CL bond is stronger than the F2 bond, okay, keep it in mind. Next, SDT of diprotic acids in aqueous solutions increases in the order. See, among these hydrides, if you look at this H2O, H2S, selenium, if you look at this, the bond length, OH bond, SH bond, SCH bond, bond length is increasing down. When it is increasing down, it is easy to break those bonds as you go down the group because when bond length is increasing bond energy decreases here. Therefore hydrogen selenium bond, hydrogen selenium bond is easy to break compared to the hydrogen oxygen bond. Hydrogen oxygen bond is stronger here, difficult to break. Don't apply the earlier problem concept here because there are no lone pairs on the hydrogen uh, and oxygen to repel each other. Uh, hydrogen does not have any lone pair. Whereas earlier case, both oxygens are adjacent, oxygen, oxygen lone pairs are repelling. So don't apply that concept here. Here just bond energy and bond length are inversely proportional, apply that only. So therefore, here bonds are weak, here bond is weak. Therefore, it easily break down as H plus. Whereas in H2O bond is strong, OH bond it is difficult to break as H plus. Therefore, SD strength increases as you go down. Yes, tellurium, selenium, sulfur. Yes, tellur tellurium is below, then se uh, that selenium will be there, sulfur is above. So this is the right only. In second option, they have given selenium, H2S is greater than selenium, which is wrong. And tellurium is less than sulfur, that is wrong. Tellurium is down, so it, it, it is more SD. So among them, therefore, first one is the right option. Sulfur, selenium, tellurium. Look at this question. Which is the correct thermal stability order? Thermal stability. See, as you go down the group, the bond length increases in these hydrides. When bond length increases, uh, bond strength will be less. Bond strength will be less means it, is, it easily breaks down when you apply the heat. Hence, H2O, 
एच टू एस टेलोरियम एंड पोलोनियम एज यू गो डाउन द ग्रुप बॉन्ड बिकम्स वीक देर फॉर इजीली ब्रेक डाउन वेन यू अप्लाई द हीट देर फॉर धर्मल स्टेबिलिटी दट मीन स्टेबल टूवर्ड्स हीट दट इज लेस इन द केस ऑफ पोलोनियम इन केस ऑफ हेच टू वो इट इज हाई स्टेबिलिटी इज हाई इट वॉन्ट इजीली ब्रेक डाउन अंडर हीट बिकॉज ऑफ द स्ट्रॉन्ग बॉन्ड एनर्जी देर देर फॉर इन द ऑप्शन इफ यू सी एच टू ओ देन एच टू एस सेलिनियम टेलोरियम पोलोरियम दिस इज द राइट ऑप्शन मैच द फॉलोइंग नो डिफरेंट ऑक्साइड्स आर गिवेन एंड देर नेचर इज गिवेन ऑन द राइट हैंड साइड लेट सी कार्बन मोनोक्साइड सी कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड इज एसिडिक वेर एज कार्बन मोनोक्साइड इज न्यूट्रल इट नाइदर रियाक्ट्स विथ एसिड नॉ रियाक्ट्स विथ बेस सो देर फॉर इट इज न्यूट्रल वेर एज बेरियम ऑक्साइड बेरियम ऑक्साइड्स इज एस ब्लॉक ऑक्साइड दिस इज ए ग्रुप ग्रुप वन ग्रुप टू ऑक्साइड्स इफ यू सी एस ब्लॉक ऑक्साइड्स दे आर बेसिक इन नेचर एक्सेप्ट इफ यू लुक एट द बेरिलियम ऑक्साइड बेरिलियम ऑक्साइड इज एम्फोट्रिक एक्सेप्ट दैट ऑल एस ब्लॉक ऑक्साइड्स आर बेसिक इन नेचर देर फॉर बेरियम ऑक्साइड विच इज एस ब्लॉक इज बेसिक इन नेचर अल्यूमिनियम ऑक्साइड अल्यूमिनियम ऑक्साइड बेरिलियम ऑक्साइड जिंक ऑक्साइड दिज आर ऑल एम्फोट्रिक इन नेचर एंड इवन टेन एंड लेड ऑक्साइड्स आर ऑल्सो एम्फोट्रिक इन नेचर कीप इट इन माइंड देर फॉर ए एल टू ओ थ्री इज एम्फोट्रिक एंड सी एल टू ओ सेवन क्लोरिन ऑक्साइड्स आर सी एल टू ओ सेवन इज वेरी हाईली एस डी कॉम्पाउंड दिस इज ए एस डी ऑक्साइड सो इफ यू लुक एट दिस ए टू बी वन सी फोर एंड डी थ्री दिस इज द राइट ऑप्शन द एलिमेंट विच इज मो विच इज द मोस्ट अबांडेंट इन द एथ क्रस्ट सी इन द एथ क्रस्ट ऑक्सीजन इज द मोस्ट अबांडेंट बिकॉज oxygen is mainly existing in the sand like this sio2 so oxygen is the most abundant element in the earth's crust because it mainly exists in the form of sio2 and after that next element if they ask then that is that is the silicon first is more oxygen second is silicon so oxygen is the answer rhombic sulfur dissolves best in see rhombic sulfur monoclinic sulfur these are all actually uh, non polar compounds non polar substances rhombic sulfur and uh, monoclinic also so they dissolve better in the non polar solvents like carbon disulfide benzene so rhombic sulfur dissolves best in the non polar solvent carbon disulfide whereas these three are the polar even ether is also slightly polar also polar only which is correct regarding acidity h2s h2sc see as you go down the group bond length is increasing so bond strength is decreasing so oh bond is strong therefore it is difficult to break as h plus tellurium h bond is weak because of higher bond length so it is easy to break it as h plus so it is more acidic so sulfur selenium so this is correct only selenium is more acidic than uh, h2s h2 next is this is wrong and again tellurium is bigger in size they are saying that is weak acidic than h2sc wrong so answer is the first one which of the following statements is not true for halogens first one all form monobasic oxy acids see monobasic oxy acids means what hocl hobr hoi these are the monobasic acids oxy acids hof hof is highly unstable compound this is highly unstable it easily breaks down that's why all form mono basic oxy acids here hof does not fit there next all for all are oxidizing agents yes all halogens are good oxidizing agents because they easily undergo reduction into the halide states and act as oxidizing agents all but fluorine shows positive oxidation states yes all show positive oxidation state not the fluorine because fluorine exhibits minus 1 only state minus 1 in its compounds whereas chlorine bromine etc they can exhibit even plus one state uh, plus oxidation states also so therefore this is also right statement only chlorine has the highest electron gain enthalpy yes among the halogens not the fluorine chlorine has the next element chlorine has the highest electron gain 
enthalpy value. Affinity to accept the electron will be more for chlorine than fluorine. So these three are correct statement. Only this one is the incorrect statement. Now look at this question. Which one of the following orders is correct for the bond dissociation enthalpy of halogen molecules? Now see, if you look at this molecule Cl2, Br2, I2. Cl2 to Br2 to I2, bond length is increasing. When bond length is increasing, bond strength decreases. So therefore, Cl2 is a better bond than Br2. Br2 is a better bond than I2. But if you look at the fluorine, if you go by the same uh, method, then we expect fluorine F2 should be occupying the highest place. But F2 is not occupying highest place. It is occupying the third place. Why? Because the fluorine and fluorine, if you take, fluorine is second period element which is very small in size. Because of the small size fluorine atoms, the adjacent fluorine atoms are very close. The lone pairs, repulsions between those lone pairs will be very, very high. Because of the high repulsions, there is an inherent strain in the molecule to move away from each other, those two fluorines. Therefore, uh, from externally, not much energy is required to break and separate these molecules. It is easy, therefore, to separate. How easier it is, we cannot tell theoretically. We have to know the order, actually. We can explain why fluorine is not occupying the first place, rather it is occupying third place. We can explain that uh, because of the lone pair, lone pair uh, repulsions on the adjacent fluorine. But we cannot say why it is only occupying the third place, why not the fourth place. That we cannot predict. Okay, That is a purely experimental uh, order. We have, you have to remember that order. So fluorine is third place. So if you look at this, bond dissociation enthalpies, highest is what? Highest is Cl2, then comes Br2, fluorine third place, least is I2. This is the correct option. The variation of the boiling points of the hydrogen halides is in the order HF, HCl, HBr, HI. What explanation, what explains the higher boiling point of hydrogen fluoride? See, if you look at only these three, HCl, HBr, HI, explanation is like this. HI has a higher Van der Waals, intermolecular Van der Waals forces because iodine is bigger atom. So, intermolecular Van der Waals forces are high in HI. Therefore, boiling point is high. Then comes HBr, then comes HCl. Now, if you go by the same rule, HF should be occupying the last place, but instead it is occupying the first place. Why? Because in HF, there is a strong intermolecular forces called hydrogen bonding. Because of that, HF is occupying the first place. So, there is a strong hydrogen bond between the HF molecules. So, this is the right reason for this question. Next, among the following, which is the strongest oxidizing agent? Which is the strongest oxidizing agent? Now see, if you look at this fluorine, fluorine easily converts into F minus. It's, its reduction potential value, if you see, its reduction potential value is very high. If you look at the tables, reduction potential tables in the electrochemistry chapter, F2 is occupying the almost highest place. So, its reducing capacity, capacity to undergo the reduction will be very high. So, it easily undergoes reduction means it easily oxidizes the other one and act as a good oxidizing agent. Therefore, strongest oxidizing agent is fluorine. Let's see the next question. Which one of the following arrangements give the correct picture of the trends indicated against it? Now, see, first one, F2, Cl2, Br2, I2. Bond dissociation energy wise, fluorine is not the high, strongest bond. It is the third strongest. It should occupy here. So, this is the wrong one. Electronegativity. Electronegativity wise, Cl, F, B, R, I. No. Electronegativity wise, fluorine is the highest. In fact, that is the highest electronegative element in the whole periodic table. So, this is wrong. F2, Cl2, Br2, I2. Oxidizing power. Yes, when it comes to oxidizing power, fluorine reduction potential value is very very high so therefore it is a very good oxidizing agent so fluorine then chlorine bromine iodine so this is the right electron gain enthalpy f c l b r i no c l should occupy the first place c l then f then b r then iodine so this is the this is wrong one let's see the next one which of the following has the lowest boiling point see in case of noble gases helium, neon, argon, etc. 
Now, intra inter atomic forces. Inter atomic forces are only London dispersion forces or Van der Waals forces. And these Van der Waals forces will be better if the size of the particle is more. Helium is very small. Therefore, inter particle forces or inter atomic forces, Van der Waals forces is so weak, it easily uh, boils. The intermolecular forces when they are weak, boiling point will be less, easily boils. Therefore, lowest boiling point means lowest intermolecular forces case that is helium. And among them, if they are suppose the highest one, helium, neon, argon, krypton. Krypton would be occupying the highest boiling position. Which of the following is most acidic? See, HF, HCl, HBr, HI. As bond length is increasing, bond strength decreases for the hydrogen halides. Therefore, easy to break H+. plus. HI is easy, easy to break, break down as H plus and I minus. Because bond length is more, bond strength is weak, easy to break down. So, this is the strongest acid. Then comes HPR, then comes uh, HCl, least is HF. Next, correct order of solubility in water for these noble gases is. See, how these noble gases get soluble? First of all, they are very less soluble because they are not polar to get soluble in water. They are non-polar. So, but which is better uh, soluble in water? Let's see. See here, actually if you take water, water is a polar solvent. Oxygen has partial negative, hydrogen has partial positive. Now, this partial positive hydrogens, suppose if the water molecule is approaching the noble, noble gas atom, then what will happen? Let's say this is the noble gas atom. It will polarize like this. Why it will polarize? Because the electron density, which has an electron have which charge, negative charge. So, this negatively charged electron cloud will be attracted towards the partial positive hydrogen of the water molecule. When water molecule is coming, approaching, the partial positive hydrogen attracts the negatively charged electron cloud. So, like this, a polarization takes place in the noble gas atom. Because of this polarization, one side of this noble gas atom gets partial positive, other side partial negative. Because electron density is shifting in this direction, so it has a partial negative and other side partial positive. So, it is a temporary dipole is uh, developing on the uh, this uh, noble gas atom. Now, see this dipole and this dipole, this dipole-dipole attractions will be there. Because of this attractions, they get soluble. The noble gas molecules, noble gas particles will get soluble even though to the less extent, but they get soluble because of this reason. Now, wherever this uh, development of dipole in the noble gas is better, their dipole-dipole attractions are better, therefore gas will be dissolved better in, that, uh, in the water. Now, if you take helium, in helium, the electron cloud is very close to the nucleus. So, nucleus is strongly attracting that electron cloud. So, it is difficult to shift the electron cloud or polarize the electron cloud. So, if you go down the group, if you go to xenon, xenon has bigger size, so valence electron cloud is at large distance from the nucleus. So, when water molecule is approaching, it is easy to shift the electron cloud because nucle uh, xenon nucleus does not have a strong hold upon that uh, electron cloud, valence electron cloud. So, in xenon, the polarization is easy, therefore dipole development is easy and dipole-dipole interactions between water and noble particle is easy. Therefore, Correct order of solubility, xenon, highly soluble, then krypton, argon, neon and helium. This is the answer for this. That's it. These are some important models on this chapter. I hope you understand all this. Read thoroughly the NCRT, not all the points in the NCRT. Take the old NCRT and read the general trends and anomalous behaviors of the first, first group element, first period element in the respective groups. So, I hope this is helpful. Thank you.